I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to see some aliens. So we got UAPs and UFOs flying all over the place at this point. And honestly, there's a very large variety of different types of UAPs that we're seeing. We've got triangles, we've got wedges, we've got pyramids, orbs, cubes, cubes inside of orbs, saucers, tic tacs, and even tic tocs. Is it true that you saw in your words a 40 foot flying tic toc? <laughs> For those of you asking the question like, why don't they just float on down from the sky and land on the White House lawn? Well, you have your answer. So when I was in college, I saw this documentary and it was kind of a bunch of people lobbying to legalize marijuana. They're all kind of talking about how it has all these different like medical uses. We should totally legalize it. And as far as I can tell, that's 100% true. I did notice that everyone presenting this argument was a you know, completely healthy adult. I mean, come on, boys. Obviously, you guys are just looking to get stoned. And hey, no judgment here. I got no problem with it. The reason I bring it up is because I feel like we're actually in the same kind of place with UAPs. We kind of get everyone together and like, these UAPs are a flight safety risk and a national security threat. Is everyone in agreement? Good. Now, bring me the aliens. And don't get me wrong, obviously I'm very interested and fascinated by all the things we got flying around in our airspace, but I feel like I'm probably not alone here. Drop me a comment and let me know, but I'm also very interested in exactly who's piloting them. Turns out, there's a ton of different types of aliens out there. People allege that UAPs can come from a whole variety of places, you know, under the ocean, inside the earth, from a completely different dimension, from the Lockheed Skunk Works. Oh yeah, and, and space. I would presume some people still think they might come from space. Obviously, I have no idea where they come from. We're still waiting to hear back. But in the meantime, I figure we just do a little bit of research, you know? Maybe see if we get any kind of insight on who may or may not be piloting them. Presumably, with near infinite amount of space, mathematically speaking, it is almost fundamentally certain that other life does exist, if not intelligent life. Some people allege that we don't even have the capacity to predict or understand what an alien might look like. There's such a wide variety of potential outcomes. I mean, everything on Earth, all living things are carbon-based. I mean, what it, would a silicon life form look like? We have absolutely no idea. But then that's kind of the fun of it, isn't it? While we're waiting for Congress to go bag us a couple spaceships, I figured, why not just, you know, do a little, do a little research? So I did a little bit of digging, and it turns out that there's a whole bunch of information about different alien life forms that have allegedly visited Earth. Who knew? Just, unfortunately, none of them are credible. So, take everything we're about to discuss today with a giant dose of skepticism, and hey, who knows? Could be fun. I've come up with four distinct alien races that we're going to discuss today, and there are certainly many more. So first up, we got Nordic aliens, often referred to as Nordics or Pleiadians. Pleiadians? Pleiadians, Pleiadians, Ple, Ple, yeah, as you can see, I got like six pages of notes here, so bear with me. Pleiadians, what? Why do you guys have to make the names so hard? Just because they're aliens doesn't mean we just can't call them like scrumpkins. You know, nice and easy, something easy to pronounce. Yeah, we're just going to call them the Nordics, Nordics. Anyway, the Nordics, they look a lot like us, as it turns out. Nordic aliens are said to hail from the star cluster Pleiades. They are often described as humanoid beings, standing around six to seven feet tall with pale skin, blue eyes or green eyes, and long blonde hair. Their physical appearance closely resembles the people of Northern European descent, hence the name Nordic. Now, as it turns out, you might actually be familiar with some Nordic aliens thanks to Marvel Studios. If you've ever heard of Thor, Loki, Odin, Heimdall, or Freya, any of these, they're all based off of ancient Nordic gods. 
The first initial reported encounters with the Nordic aliens date back to the early 20th century. However, their prominence skyrocketed in the 1950s and 60s when numerous UFO contactees claimed to have met these extraterrestrial beings. I'm a little jealous. I'm a little bit jealous. You know, I wouldn't mind meeting a Nordic alien. As it turns out, they seem to be relatively peaceful, very wise. This seems to be kind of consistent with all alien races. They're all a lot smarter than us. Not saying anything against us humans, but man, we make some questionable decisions, all I'm saying, you know. Many reports claim that Nordic aliens are on Earth to observe human evolution, guide humanity towards a peaceful coexistence, and help us ascend to higher spiritual realms. Some claim that they have a specific interest in our planet's nuclear capabilities, fearing that we might bring destruction not only to ourselves, but also to our neighboring planets. I think that we're all a little bit concerned about that, you know, the nuclear thing. Billy Mayer, a Swiss farmer, is perhaps the most well-known contactee who claimed to have had continuous contact with the Nordic aliens. According to Mayer, the Nordics provided insights into our universe, spiritual teachings, and even showed him around their spacecraft. Why didn't they bring me to the spaceship? I would very much like to go to the spaceship, please. If anyone is just floating around and wants, looking for someone to pick up and give them a ride, you know, take a little tour of the galaxy, I volunteer. As with all things UFO and extraterrestrial, pop culture has played a significant role in shaping public perception of these beings. Nordic aliens have made their mark in films, TV shows, and books. These descriptions vary widely from benevolent space brothers to beings with ulterior motives. But my biggest takeaway are the Nordic aliens are the ones that would look a lot like us, where you just pass one walking down the street and maybe some features might be a little bit off, but in large, they would be able to blend in quite easily. They could just be walking amongst us and we would be none the wiser. Next up, we got the reptilians. Now, these guys are way more popular. You probably heard about them. They're in control of the government and just the world in general. They're shape-shifting little bastards. Everyone could potentially be a reptilian. Anywho, reptilian aliens, or commonly just called reptilians, or sometimes dracos. Sorry, that makes me think of Harry Potter. We're gonna go with reptilians. They are said to hail from the star system Alpha Draconis. Alpha Draconis! As their name suggests, these beings are often depicted with reptilian or dragon-like features, including scales, elongated eyes, and sometimes even tails or wings. They can be tall, ranging from six to eight feet, and have a very muscular build. Reptilians work out, if you were unaware. The popular conspiracy surrounding reptilians suggests that they have infiltrated Earth, taking on human forms and occupying positions of power to manipulate humanity for their ends. Some theories suggest that they feed off human energy, emotions, and even flesh. Sometimes, they eat people. Just eat chicken. Why not just eat some chickens, you know? Everything tastes like chicken. I'm sure people taste like chicken. Uh, not that I know personally, but, you know, one would stand to assume that we are not the exception. It has been asserted that many influential leaders, celebrities, and the global elite are reptilian shapeshifters working covertly to control humanity. Many skeptics argue that reptilian theory is a concoction of ancient myths, modern fears, and misunderstandings. As it turns out, there's a significant lack of concrete evidence to support the vast claims made about these beings. But hey, that's not stopping us, is it? Despite skepticism, belief in reptilians persists. There are online communities, seminars, and even documentaries dedicated to exposing their alleged influence on our world. Like Mark Zuckerberg. I've heard that he is a reptilian. Next up, we got the Anunnaki. You might have heard of them. They're like a little bit famous. And that has to literally be the most fun word to say that I've ever heard. Anunnaki. Wait! We must consult the Anunnaki. The term Anunnaki is derived from ancient Sumerian texts, where it refers to deities in the pantheon, descendants of An and Ki, the god of the heavens and the goddess of the earth, and their descendants. In some interpretations, the Anunnaki are considered deities associated with the underworld. You know, I'm not sure I want to run into those guys. They do not sound pleasant. 
The modern fascination with the Anunnaki largely stems from the works of Zachariah Stitchin, especially his series, The Earth Chronicles. Sitchin claimed that the Anunnaki were actually a race of extraterrestrial beings from the planet Nibiru, which has an elongated orbit around our sun, bringing it into our solar system every 3,600 years. The obvious question I'd like to know is, you know, like, how would you know that? I mean, how, how can you possibly know that? Like, yeah, you know, every 3,600 years we get a new planet, you know, I thought about it once, so it must be true. I, how long till Nibiru comes back? If you know, tell me. Drop it in the comments. Though descriptions vary, many modern interpretations suggest Anunnaki were giants, often towering at 8 to 10 feet tall, with a humanoid appearance, elongated skulls, and potentially reptilian characteristics. This theory has sometimes been used to explain the existence of ancient structures that some believe could not have been built with the technology of the time. I'm looking at you, Pyramids of Giza. It has been alleged that the Anunnaki are the ones that drove the reptilian aliens underground. Apparently, these guys don't like each other. So, you know, there's that. I mean, if the reptilian people are scared of the Anunnaki, I feel like I have every right to also be scared of them. Like, let's just say I came into contact with an Anunnaki, you know, and maybe be like, could you maybe send some Nordics, some ple Pleiad ple ple Pleiadians? Send me some Pleiadians. According to Stitchin and others, the Anunnaki first arrived on Earth approximately 450,000 years ago. Their primary interest was in mining for gold, which they required to stabilize the atmosphere of their home planet, Nibiru. Initially, the Anunnaki themselves mined this gold, but they later created humanity to serve as their workforce. This creation was supposedly achieved through genetic manipulation, blending of the Anunnaki's DNA with that of Homo erectus. <laughs> Erectus. <laughs> so maybe I, or even you, we could be part Anunnaki and have no idea? The supposed home planet of the Anunnaki, Nibiru, sometimes referred to as Planet X, is believed to have a unique elliptical orbit that brings it into our solar system every 3,600 years. Some claim that with each pass, significant events, disruptions, or changes happen on Earth due to its gravitational effects. You've got to imagine that planet would be very cold if it's just that far away from the sun. Like, how exactly life would develop on a planet that far away from the sun? I have no idea, but maybe that's why they needed all the gold. Because, I mean, let's be honest, if you're going to freeze your ass off just forever, might as well do it on a giant pile of gold. Many archaeologists, historians, and scientists dispute Stitchin's interpretations of ancient texts pointing out that the translations and conclusions often deviate significantly from mainstream understandings. Nibiru and its speculated effects have been widely debunked by the astronomical community, with no evidence supporting the existence of such a planet in our solar system. Last but not least, we've got the Greys, the Grey aliens. And these guys are by far the most popular, the most frequently encountered, and the most easily recognizable thanks to pop culture and all those other such things. And let me go ahead and say this, just before we dive too far into this, I probably came across, God, it feels like at least 50 different encounters of people allegedly encountering gray aliens. And for what it's worth, they're insanely consistent. Like, insanely consistent. Everybody says almost the exact same thing. It's very unanimous across the board. And, I mean, that could be because of pop culture. So I guess it is possible, you know, that everybody who decides to jump on the internet and make up a story about encountering an alien, that it would be of the gray variety. However, it is worth pointing out that all these people who have allegedly encountered gray aliens, they, um, they got their story straight. Gray aliens are commonly referred to as grays, and are arguably the most iconic and widely recognized depiction of an extraterrestrial being in popular culture. Characterized by their gray skin, large black eyes, and slender bodies, they have become synonymous with UFO sightings and abduction scenarios. Something else that everyone is very consistent on is that there are two types of gray aliens. You've got the short gray ones and the tall gray ones. Encounters with the small grays are typically described as very unpleasant. Their demeanor is often described as emotionless and robotic, leading some to speculate that the small gray aliens might actually be bioengineered entities, or maybe even advanced drones, but 
basically the idea is that they themselves, they might not be sentient. They're just kind of created to do the bidding of the taller greys. Short greys are typically ranging between three and a half to four and a half feet in height. The short greys are often depicted as the foot soldiers or the workers. Their demeanor is usually depicted as emotionless or robotic, leading some to speculate that they might be bioengineered entities or even advanced drones rather than fully sentient beings. Tall greys, standing at least six feet or more, are believed to hold a higher authority or status than their shorter counterparts. Abductees often describe them as being more willing to communicate and more assertive, with some speculating that they are the scientists or the leaders amongst the grey alien. The modern era reports interactions with the grey alien started sometime in the 1960s, with the famous Betty and Barney Hill abduction case being one of the most well-documented encounters. Their descriptions of the beings they met would cement the image of the greys in the public's imagination. Greys are often described as conducting experiments, collecting biological samples, and performing medical procedures on abductees. Common theory suggests that they have an interest in human genetics, possibly due to problems with their own species, reproduction, or survival. It's also worth noting here that in every single case where people were describing an encounter with grey aliens, one 100% of the time, they suggested that they speak telepathically. So basically, all gray aliens are telepathic, at least as far as I can tell. As a matter of fact, I couldn't find a single instance where someone described them as speaking verbally. So this is one of the other, like, very consistent elements of the lore surrounding gray aliens. People basically state that the tall grays are capable of some emotions and not others. Like, they don't understand our capacity for fear and other such emotions, but they have 100% shown that they're capable of emotions like curiosity and excitement, stuff like that. All, as I said before, communicated telepathically. I actually came across several accounts where it was alleged that gray aliens mean us absolutely no harm. So essentially their problem is, is that when they come and, you know, snatch someone out of their bed in the middle of the night while they're sleeping and they wake up on an operating table, like, they're far too scared to communicate, and they don't seem to understand why this is the case. I mean, honestly, I'll give it to them. It's quite the pickle. I have no idea how you kidnap someone in the middle of the night, bring them up to your spaceship, and do experiments on them without them being anything other than terrified. You know, maybe ring the doorbell. Like, get them to sign a consent form, you know? Just ask their permission to bring them up to the spaceship. Think you might be surprised how many people are totally fine with it if you approach them that way. But hey, if there is one thing we can say about alleged extraterrestrials, it's that their technology and the stuff that they can do, whether it's UFOs or UAPs or whatever you choose to call them, a lot of it would look like magic to us. It's said that gray aliens are able to materialize and walk through walls or lift us up into the air and pull us through walls. And some go as far as to say they might be able to control our mind or even alter our very perception of reality. Fact of the matter remains that Alien life in general has been theorized about as far back as you can imagine. I mean, let's take the story of Adam and Eve, for example, where Eve accepted an apple when tempted by a walking, talking reptilian humanoid. It's like, hey, you know, eat this apple, you'll get way smarter. you become conscious. And however many years later, we still don't even know exactly what that means. But at the end of the day, whether any of these accounts are true or whether every single one of them is 100% completely fabricated, it's all equally as interesting to me. The only thing I'll say that I do believe is that whatever is flying around our skies that we've recently taken a much larger public interest in, I mean, someone's got to be piloting them. And whoever that somebody might be, well, that person is someone I'd really like to talk to. But hey, maybe you've had an encounter with some form of alien. Or maybe there's a type of extraterrestrial being that I didn't talk about that you'd like to have me investigate a little bit. Just let me know in the comments. I mean, hey, if you've been abducted by gray aliens or had a face-to-face -face encounter with a reptilian or anything of the sort, I'd love to hear about it. Shoot me an email. Drop a comment. But hey, it seems like with each passing day, we're one step closer to figuring out some of this stuff, like finding out exactly what the government knows, what they could potentially be hiding, whether that's the bodies of some gray aliens or some flying saucers, or maybe they just got a bunker filled up with balloons. Who the hell knows? I certainly don't. But... I will continue to explore it until I figure it out. So that's something that you might be interested in. Hit that subscribe button. 
But if you too think that it is time for us finally to be able to perhaps see an alien, I completely agree with you. Let's fucking go. Thank you.